And here we go. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Wine Down TV. Now to all our new and returning subscribers, cheers to you. Now listen, I am not a big spirits fan. I have been known to put ginger ale in 25 year old scotch, which I know is a faux pas, but it, it was burning a hole in my esophagus and it was brutal. I needed some help to get it down my gullet, so sue me. But recently, I just had two experiences. I had cognac for the first time and loved it. And then I finally understood what people meant when they said something was smooth. I got it. Today, I get to talk with my friend, Leo Tassandier of Cognac Park, whose family is responsible for this delicious cognac that I cannot stop gushing about. Here we go. Hey, Leo, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, thank you for your invitation. Of course, listen, I had to talk about it. I had this the other day and I had to talk about it because it was spectacular. And I'm glad that you've taken some time to, to teach me and others about cognac, things that we didn't know. So Absolutely. thank you, I appreciate it. So through my research, I saw that your family has been doing this for 130 years. Yeah. Who started it? Give me everything. Uh, we started out the company uh, in 1880, so it's been uh, now a while. It was my, my great great grandfather, Gaston Tessandier. He was a winemaker and uh, he decided to, you know, distill uh, eau de vie. And he bought our current family estate uh, in the Bordery region. And uh, so, yeah, we've been producing uh, and distilling cognac for five generations in the world. Oh, do you still have like, like cognac from the very first production? Do you guys still have any of that oh. in stock? We, we still have some, actually no, from my great-great-grandfather. But my grandfather was in a company in uh, the 50s. We, we st still have, you know, cognac uh, from, from this period. For those who don't know, what are the tiers of cognac? Explain a little bit about a cognac terroir. You have six different crus. So you have the Bordery. Uh, this is where we have the, 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 the family estates. You have the Grand Champagne, Petit Champagne, uh, Fin bois. So those three with the borderies are used for the for the blend. And you have the bon bois and the bois ordinaire, which are not really used into uh, the blend, but it could be because you have a sandy soil. Uh, in borderies, it's gonna be more you know clay and flint. And uh, and grand champagne, petit champagne, it, it's it's gonna be chalk, uh, uh, limestone, uh, and clay. Uh, actually, why does it call Grand Champagne? Uh, because uh, this is the same soil as the Champagne region. What are the cognac grapes? I know they said, um, t uh, is it Trebbiano is, is one? Is it Trebbiano? Uni Blanc, Uni Blanc. Uni Blanc, okay. I think it's Trebbiano and it's in Italy and... Uh, yeah, and, yeah. But so, <laughs> is there like a specific like, like a way that you blend it? Do you do like, because it's three grapes, right? That you put into it, but then yes. you, there's more that you can add if you feel like? We have six different varietals, okay. um, but uh, the main varietal will be the Uni Blanc. It's 98% of the vineyard, of the Cognac vineyard. Okay. And for our Cognac, it's 100% Uni Blanc. We chose to, you know, stick with one varietal. And uh, Uni Blanc, you know, uh, it's really acidic, so it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the perfect varietal for the distillation uh, because it's not gonna, uh, going to damage your pot still. Uh, okay. with sweetness because, you know, the sugar will damage the pot still. Yeah. Uh, it's really floral, uh, okay. it's dry, and you have, at the end, um, a really round and delicate finish, I would say, you know. Uh, and yeah. with a huge aging potential as well, so... Actually, the Uniblanc is the perfect varietal for cognac. So for people out there that are layman's, because you know I'm new to it, what can you teach us about where to start, how to start, or how would how would you approach it approach it as a new as a new person? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, you know, I think the the most important you know part um, it's not to fear the alcohol because you know cognac it's forty percent in BV, so sometimes it can scare people. Um, but um, you have to you know tame it uh, in a way. Um, so I explain myself. First, you have uh, to take a tulip glass. Well, I have a tulip glass here. I don't know if you can see it well. If you don't have it, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you will appreciate it, the cognac as well, but uh, it's better to, to drink it in, into a glass like this. Once the, the cognac uh, is poured uh, into the, the glass, you have to you smell it, uh, you know, delicately because 
you know, the, the alcohol, alcohol can burn you a little yeah. bit. Drink it chilled, not too warm, because you will feel more the alcohol vapors. Okay. And uh, and yeah, just enjoy it too this wonderful glass. I mean, the thing that I look for, you know, as a new person into wine and now cognac, thank you. Um, I look for an experience and that's exactly what I had uh, when I was trying um, cognac park. It's something I will never forget. And it was just like, oh, okay. Like it's opened up my mind to, all right, um, I can do this. I can, I can try cognac and not run, like you say, run away from it. You know, to stand out from the biggest companies as Hennessy or Doucet, yeah. uh, we need to create a very good quality cognac and in innovative cognac as well. Our cognac, you know, is, is different, is original, innovative, uh, and with a, a much cheaper price than a Hennessy for the same quality or a Doucet. Mm. And, uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, you have to drink Cognac Park. <laughs> De Listen, you hear what he said? You have to drink Cognac Park. Now, where can people buy your product? In different liquor stores um, uh, around New York and Brooklyn. Hey, this is such a pleasure. Um, thank you for your time and, and all yeah, the information. Been a for me, really. Yeah, much. this is so much fun. That was so much fun talking to Leo about the process. And trust me, you're going to want to try this Cognac. Now, if you're already into Cognac, hit me in the comments and let me know which producers and why. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for all future episodes. And coming up next week, we're going to check out a winter white, San Pere Resilience. It's a blend of Viognier and Marsan. Cheers, everyone, to we drink together again. And no, I am not drinking cognac this early in the day. Cheers.